Hi, it's Katrina. From evidence of water in space to a mysterious ninth planet lurking in our solar system, here are eight recent space discoveries. Number 8. Methane on Mars For years, scientists have been perplexed about the intermittent presence of methane on Mars. In April of this year, writer Mike Wall of Space.com reported that NASA's recent Curiosity rover mission determined that Mars experiences seasonal cycles of background levels of methane. Most of the Earth's methane comes from living creatures, prompting scientists to wonder if the red planet's methane also has a biological origin. Shortly after this news broke, the first results from the Trace Gas Orbiter, or TGO, were reported. The TGO spacecraft is part of the European-led ExoMars mission and has been circling Mars looking for signs of life. In its early observations between April and August of 2018, the TGO found barely any traces of methane. Scientist Oleg Korablev is the principal investigator of the Atmospheric Chemistry Suite instrument on the TGO. Korablev and his colleagues detected an upper limit of methane of 0.012 parts per billion, much lower than what scientists expected based on the surface levels of methane detected by NASA's Curiosity rover. According to scientist Marco Giurana of the Instituto Nazionale di Astrofisica in Rome, who is not involved in the research, methane lacks a global surface presence on Mars and is characterized by transient emission spikes. That's why surface-level vehicles detected it occasionally, by being in the right place at the right time, as he put it. Therefore, it would make sense for TGO to detect much lower levels of the gas. Still, scientists, including Giurana, expect TGO to have higher readings because they theorized that methane plumes would enter global circulation and create a uniform presence around Mars. They maintained that the lower atmosphere must contain a destruction mechanism that eats methane 1,000 times faster than predicted according to conventional chemistry methods. Researchers have proposed several explanations based on lab experiments and computer simulations, including the possibilities that methane is chemically bonding with eroded quartz grains, that it's sinking into the surface rock and soil of Mars, or that it's perhaps being destroyed by reactive elements and shifting sand dunes. Giorana speculated that TGO's readings were affected by a strong planet-encircling dust storm that began on Mars in June 2018. According to Korablev, however, TGO did not detect any methane after the dust storm as it theoretically should have. In an email to Space.com, Chris Webster, a senior scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, called for patience, stating that the methane story is full of surprises and that he believes TGO may detect higher levels in the future. Number 7. Moon May Be Frozen Leftovers of Magma One of the biggest questions scientists are still trying to figure out is how Earth's moon was formed. Recent observations of the moon's chemical composition conflict with the most popular theory, known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis, which holds that the moon is a giant merger of bits and pieces of Earth as a result of a catastrophic collision with a space body four and a half billion years ago. Newly published research by researchers from Japan and the United States begins with an explanation that according to the standard version of the giant impact hypothesis, most of the moon must be made up of material from the giant planetoid that struck Earth. However, their findings, as well as the findings of other researchers, increasingly show that the moon and Earth have a nearly identical chemical composition. Using computer simulations, the team demonstrated the possibility of a rocky protoplanet smashing into the Earth around 50 million years ago, when it was covered in a magma ocean up to 930 feet deep. The splashing magma expanded in volumes as it entered space, and the magma followed the broken bits of the rocky protoplanet around Earth's orbit. While most of the planetoid fell back into the atmosphere and into the Earth's vast magma ocean, the rest coalesced with the magma to form the Moon. Study co-author Shun Ichiro Karato, a geophysicist at Yale University, said in a statement, In our model, around 80% of the Moon is made of proto-Earth materials. In most of the previous models, about 80% of the Moon is made of the impactor. That's a big difference. What do you think made the Moon? Let me know in the comments below. Number 6. The Ninth Planet Our solar system may contain a mysterious ninth planet. And no, it's not Pluto. After much back and forth about whether Pluto qualified as a planet, the scientific community ultimately deemed it a dwarf planet in 2006. In 2014, the idea of the existence of a ninth planet was proposed, and in January 2016, evidence of it was unveiled. Known among scientists as Planet 9, the elusive body is estimated to be between 5 and 10 times the mass of Earth. Are they talking about Planet 9 in school these days? Does anyone know? 
According to a paper published online in the journal Physics Reports in February, Planet 9 probably travels in an elongated orbit that's likely 15 degrees off our solar system's main orbital plane, which most planets orbit. Planet 9's orbit peaks at 400 times the Earth's distance from the Sun. Researchers suspected the existence of Planet 9 based on patterns of objects within the Kuiper Belt, a ring of debris in the outer solar system, which clump together in ways that suggest they're being tugged on by the gravity of something very large. Some scientists recently calculated a 1 in 500 probability that Planet 9 does not exist. Its existence remains to be proven, however, and some experts pointed out that the pull of the objects within the Kuiper Belt could be due to some other factor, such as the belt's own gravitational effects on its contents. Others suggest that the perceived clumping of the objects is the result of human bias in research. Number 5. Black Hole Devouring a Neutron Star In May of this year, scientists announced the first evidence of a black hole devouring a neutron star. When this event occurs, gravitational waves are sent rippling through the fabric of space-time. A team of physicists recently detected these telltale wrinkles using two of the world's largest gravitational wave detectors, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, in the US, and the Virgo detector in Italy. They're 86% certain that their observation was indeed a black hole devouring a neutron star. The signal detected by the technology is very weak because the event occurred 1.2 billion light-years away. Alan Weinstein, a member of the LIGO scientific collaboration and professor of physics at the California Institute of Technology, stated that there's a 14% chance that the signal was caused by an instrumental error. The detection could potentially teach scientists a lot about how heavy elements reach our planet if the scientists are correct. Huge amounts of nuclear material, such as gold and platinum, are released by these collisions as well as light waves, gravitational waves, and other types of electromagnetic waves. The team is searching for radio or optical signals from the event in hopes of confirming their findings and are cleaning up their data to reduce background noise, according to Weinstein. Number 4. The Universe is Moving Too Fast After the Big Bang, everything in the universe blasted apart. Light from this event can still be observed by looking at faraway parts of the universe, and scientists can measure how fast things are moving in those places. They are also able to calculate how fast the universe should currently be expanding based on that speed. Attempts by astronomers to measure how fast the universe is expanding today have shown that it appears to be moving faster than it should be. That finding was recently confirmed in a new paper based on detailed observations taken using the Hubble Space Telescope, which show that the universe is expanding 9% too fast. These new findings decrease the chance of an observational error from 1 in 3,000 to 1 in 100,000, showing a higher likelihood that scientists are right about the universe moving too fast. Lead author Adam Rice, an astrophysicist and Johns Hopkins University Nobel laureate, explained that the conflicting data is not simply two experiments disagreeing. In his words, one is a measurement of how fast the universe is expanding today as we see it. The other is a prediction based on the physics of the early universe and on measurements of how fast it ought to be expanding. If these values don't agree, there becomes a very strong likelihood that we're missing something in the cosmological model that connects the two eras. What researchers are missing, however, is unknown. Number 3. What's underneath the moon's crust? A new study has found that the first rover on the far side of the moon, China's U-22, may have discovered the first samples of the moon's mantle, which are believed to have been released by a giant, ancient cosmic impact from the lunar interior. The findings may someday help science uncover how the moon was formed and evolved. Previous research suggested that the moon was once covered by an ocean of magma, like the other inner rocky bodies throughout the solar system. According to this model, lighter minerals rich in silicone and aluminum, such as plagioclase, floated to the moon's surface. This would explain why plagioclase makes up as much as 98% of some portions of the moon. However, this theory is widely debated given the uncertainty surrounding whether the right mix of chemical and physical features were present for the lunar magma ocean to separate like this. Analyzing the moon's mantle could offer insight into its early days. After previous failed attempts by the US and the Soviet Union to obtain samples of the moon's mantle, China may have accomplished the task. The U-22 rover, which was deployed within the 115-mile von Karman crater within the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon, recovered samples that are markedly different from typical lunar material. The minerals contain olivine and low-calcium pyroxene, which back up the prevailing theory of a cooling lunar magma ocean during the moon's formation and evolution. Number 2. 
First audio of a Mars quake. Earlier this year, NASA reported that their Mars InSight lander may have measured and audio recorded a Mars quake for the first time ever. The faint seismic signal was captured on April 6th on the lander's 128th Martian day or Sol by its Seismic Experiment for Interior Structure, or SIZE device. Although scientists are still examining the date to determine the cause of the signal, it appears that the trembling was generated from within the planet, rather than by wind or other forces above the surface. InSight principal investigator Bruce Bannert of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena stated that although InSight carries on seismic research started with moonquakes during the Apollo missions, the event officially kicks off a new field, Martian seismology. One of InSight's main objectives is to obtain solid data on the Martian interior. The seismic event was too small to accomplish that, but it's a start. InSight seismometer was placed on the red planet surface in December 2018. Since then, three other seismic signals have been detected, in addition to the most significant one that I told you about. Their origin is unknown and the team will continue to study them to determine their causes. Number 1. Water discovered on asteroid Bennu In December of last year, NASA announced the discovery of water on the asteroid Bennu during their first asteroid sample return mission, OSIRIS-REx. The water is locked inside the clays that make up the asteroid. The spacecraft's two spectrometers revealed the presence of hydroxyls, or molecules that contain oxygen and hydrogen atoms bonded together. Based on their suspicion that these hydroxyl groups exist globally throughout the asteroid within its water-bearing clay minerals, scientists believe that Bennu's rocky material interacted with water at some point. The findings indicate that while Bennu itself is too small to have ever hosted liquid water, Bennu's parent body, a much larger asteroid, may have once contained liquid water. Amy Simon, OVIR's deputy instrument scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, expects good things to come of the OSIRIS-REx mission, stating when samples of this material are returned by the mission to Earth in 2023, scientists will receive a treasure trove of new information about the history and evolution of our solar system. Thanks for watching! Were you surprised by any of these? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!